Welcome to CNN Money Switzerland and our summer program. Now imagine waking up and realizing that your sector, your company or your job just doesn't look the same anymore. How do you prepare yourself for this? How do you reskill and retrain yourself? In today's discussion on the future of work, we zoom in on lifelong learning and what this would mean in the aftermath of coronavirus. Joining me today is CEO of Microsoft Switzerland, Mariana Yannick. You, in your role, you're surrounded by technology every single day. But just tell us, since coronavirus started, has this adoption of technology changed? Thank you for having me, Olivia. Um, to your question, yes, I think we've seen you know, things being possible. We would never have thought that would be possible, things that would have taken two, three years happening in days, weeks. And the first thing was obviously the adoption of technology to work from home or do other things remotely. So we have seen that and we are still seeing it evolving and some things may be here to stay. Can you give us a better picture of the utilization of Microsoft products and tools during this whole time throughout Switzerland? Oh, we've been very lucky that you know a lot of our customers were already prepared and, and for these kind of situations were then really using the technology. So we've seen a 500% uptake in education and also a 100% uptake in usage, um, even over 100% um, in, in companies. And the good news is was just not the, the big companies, but also small companies. So for us, that's a very important point that shows that this kind of technology is really democratized. So it's affordable, it's accessible for everybody. And it's not only using, you know, a sort of a, a video conferencing, but having really a tool that is helping you to collaborate and to, to have your documents and, and also do workshops. So this was a very intense, but very rewarding experience the last few months. And it's continuing. Now, this is just one side of the coin when we're talking about coronavirus, because for many people, it has been a difficult time. They've either lost their jobs or they're feeling quite insecure. In your role as CEO of Microsoft Switzerland, what is the advice you are sharing to those who want to have a firmer foot in the labour market going forward? Mm -hmm. I think it's important for, for, to start with to acknowledge these emotions. Because we know we trend, we try, in, 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 the, in the working space, we were trying to always push emotions aside and say, come on, toughen up. And, and I think that's the first step to say, OK, we are in a world where there's a lot of insecurity. You can't predict the future. Um, how can people prepare, them, prepare themselves and take accountability for their employability? But on the other hand, I would say it's not the right thing to push it back to every single individual. It's important to have a community. And I think in Switzerland, this works actually, at least from the principle, to see the business community is there to support. Um, and the second point is obviously how to find the right topics. You know, where do I need upskilling? What is actually the skills that are needed in the market? And um, there as well, there's help needed also from the employer, but from the community as well. So on this topic of lifelong learning, Microsoft has come out with a fairly ambitious initiative. You want to help 25 million people across the world to have the necessary, uh, necessary digital skills in this COVID-19 economy. What do those necessary skills look like? I mean, for us, it was important when we saw this shock happening and we saw, you know, the unemployment rates really going up, especially in the US, to take a very principled approach and look at data first. Uh, and of course, you know, there is nothing like a perfect data. But I think we see through the data we have through LinkedIn, where we have access and governments have access as well to what actually what kind of jobs are being thought after, what kind of skills are thought after. We have 690 million users, 50 million companies, and to look at those data. And when we do that across the globe, I think we can see that nothing has really changed from pre-COVID time, but things have been accelerated. So the, the skills um, companies are looking for, but also governments is around all these kind of data, data scientist type of skills. The other part, the second, I would say it's project management and all kinds of 
people that can orchestrate processes. Um, and the third one is um, also something in, in the area of security, cybersecurity, because through the crisis we've seen a lot of things happening here as well. So that would be three things where we see a clear trend that has been accelerated when it comes to job seeking. How have you noticed the investment into employee training developing over the past years and where do you see that going forward? Well, thank you for the question because actually um, we've looked at data going back to 2008 to today and the sad news is that the, the spending from companies to upskill their employees actually go down across the globe. And what has also um, gone down or even stagnated has been, you know, the, the number of people reskilling themselves. So both those statistics are actually not really what we want to see. Of course, we, we saw a little uptake now during um, the crisis, but the general trend has not been the trend we want to see. That's why I think we as a company think it's time to mobilize everybody on this planet. And the good news is we are all in that together to get this lifelong learning culture, you know, in, in all our back in, in our economy into our economies. So what, what's holding companies back from spending on employees? Is it a matter of cost? Is it a matter of they're not seeing the results straight away? What could be some of the reasons behind that? Well, we don't know yet because, but you know, I assume it's, as you said, the, the first point is the cost because it's money, it's time investment, but it's also the insecurity to say, what is actually the impact if I do that? Uh, what's in for me as a company um, and I think that's why we also see that a principled approach that the database is going also to help to have these I would call them business cases to find the right skills and invest into those skills to help employees keep their employability and be also a bit more prescriptive maybe because it's so difficult to find you know between all these uh, courses you can have the right thing for your company moving forward. It has to be part of the strategy of a company. And this is where Microsoft has experience and you also encourage your own employees to upskill and reskill constantly. What does an effective on-the-job training program look like? How do you get employees to, on top of their daily job, to think about other skills they might need in the future? Well, I think what we've, we, got, we got really serious about two years ago on that topic and uh, we looked at it obviously from a company strategy, but another driver was obviously also technology evolving so fast. And, you know, as a company offering technology, you need to be on top of it. So we, we, we have been very prescriptive looking at different roles and looking also seeing looking where people stand, that's also important, looking also at external talent we get, what kind of external talent can we attract to the company, what are skills they need to, to get. And from there we build a program. So every role, including myself, we have a clear agenda, what we need to learn, mandatory training, and of course then a plenty of, of things we can, we can do, be it on LinkedIn learning or other sources where we can do other things we're interested in, personally or because, you know, everyone has aspiration to, to do thing, other things also. Is Microsoft Switzerland going to be implementing any long-term changes from the crisis, whether it's operational, whether it's flexible working? I mean, we've learned quite a lot um, on our own work from home concept because we already had work from home before. But through the crisis, first of all, we got interesting data also to see that we need to go back to really to nearly to the individual and really take into account what this person really needs and also work with every colleague to allow people to be very intentional how they want to work the choice you know when do i go to work when do i visit client how do i organize my day so we learned a lot and also because we're going to move to the circle in one year from now uh, we're already starting doing controlled experiments in our office today um, to learn and to start when we are going to refurbish or just equip the new building to do things totally differently that we were thought we would do. And I want to finish up with a question also on learning. How are you reskilling yourself and are you taking any classes that are even outside of the box for your, for your role? 
Yes, absolutely. So I'm at the moment, I'm really thrilled to see what, you know, we have online starting Harvard. Everybody is putting courses online where you say, wow, you know, am I able to participate and to learn? So definitely I try to, to, to plan that and sometimes it's during the weekend. What we have learned also, and maybe it's worth mentioning that this learning experiment needs to be more integrated in the daily work. Because today, and I see it myself, if you want to learn, you have to, to leave your work environment time. and go somewhere else. And what we're going to do, we are going to build an application um, in Teams. We're going to integrate that where you have um, all sorts of content so you can integrate that better in your daily work. Because that's something I learned to go out and in. And you have, if it's seamless, it's easier to do, easier to plan. Um, so that's something we are, we're going to have a preview by the end of the year.